Uh, here I have a later sharp video. This is a VCA 30. So I think they went to these mechanisms around the VCA 105 or something. Um, the, the first of these sort of black VCA series sharps, I think it was a 101, 103. was still based on the older like sharp uh, 700 series or something like that. Whereas these ones actually go to a completely new mechanism in them. Quite a plastic mechanism that had a lot of trouble with it. Um, so they did break down quite a bit these ones. They had a little lever that failed in them. These cassette housings weren't very well built so they would break easily. Um, they, these also came out in Australia under the Philips brand. Some of like I think the VR6448 and stuff around that era. And then after these they went to the mid drives which I think initially still had the same mechanism in them. Just mounted in the middle of the machine and the machine was made a bit smaller. And then they went to a, a completely different mech I think with like the motor on top of the head drum and all that sort of thing. So have a look at this. I think I may have to stick my hand in here to do something to get this mechanism to load a tape. Or a dummy tape. Oh no, this one's alright. It's not like the Panasonic. Sounds like the master cam struggling a bit, which was a common thing. This little arm, look at that. Very common in these. That's stiff. That might actually be why the master cam is struggling. They were very common. God, I'd hate to think how many of those I had to pull out because the grease goes stiff under this post, I think it is. Got to remove the post, remove the head. I think the head has to come out, yeah, and then lubricate it. That was a really common problem, which I haven't seen in a long time, but I'll remember that now. So I'll put it into play and see if we can get in the cam. Sounds like it's struggling a bit. We've got no reel take up. Pin trollers working though, the reel's just going now. And I've spun it a bit. I think the only real problem with these with the reel was the, the belt. But when I stop that, the actual main pulley I can see underneath is still running. Maybe it's just seized up a bit from not being used. At least it doesn't look like the lever's worn out in this one, which will cause... I forget what, something when you retract it. I think the um, tape guides catch on something. Something doesn't move out of the way. Which I'm going to have to be careful with this lever too when I let this back off. Though I think they come back first. But I think something wouldn't get out of the way because a little lever underneath was worn and the mech would jam and could break the master cam and stuff and the lever they made a, more, a modified one with thicker plastic on it so it didn't wear out as quick but I'm pretty sure I did see those ones that were also worn out but we'll put this back in a stop and ready to turn off the power at the power point if anything jams yeah I think they need to flick you need to flick the thing because it does a little rewind and to take any slack out of the tape so you need to turn the reel to get it to just go into stop mode. The mode switches were common on these, it's mounted under this motor. They used to get dirty contacts in them all the time, so these machines used to see a lot of these for repair. Yeah, those belts don't look 100% there. But at least the machine is largely in working order. So they're quite simple to work on these ones. Just gonna remove that little bracket there take the belt off. I've done so many of these it's amazing I haven't touched on these in 15 or more years and I can pretty much remember exactly how to work on them more so than the older machines because I must have probably fixed hundreds of these things either the Phillips or Sharp versions. Take the two screws out down there took the belt off and then there's a little plug here. Obviously got the power off at this point. Now do I need to take the front panel off? I can't remember. No I don't. I think these varied, some of them may have had, uh, might have just been the earlier VCAs with a different mech, they had the, the door flap actually on this, and when you put this back you've got to lift the door up on the front and slide it under so the little bit that lifts the door can actually go under the door, otherwise you'll try and eject the tape and it'll come up and hit, hit on the plastic door, and then it'll load back in because it, I think they normally loaded back in because they didn't get, get out in time, the mech didn't reach the end of the mode switch, so the actual machine would would pull it back in again because it knew something was wrong. Yeah, this arm's still just slowly creeping back on <laughs> God, yeah, I forgot they used to do that. That's a bit of a pain. I think it means we have to realign the audio control head after we've done it. 
but these are very common for the mode switch you almost just as a routine service on these you remove that bit of wiring pull that plug and there's three little screws I could almost do these things blindfolded even though I haven't touched one for so long and yeah that you can pull the whole loading motor assembly off I probably should have really done this first on these machines not knowing the condition of it the safest way to, would be to run one of these through by hand Where's that screw? I can feel it, but there it is. Because of the problems I had with jamming and stuff in these, it probably is best to actually manually turn the master cam when you've got an unknown machine. I okay. should just pull up. Still got one of the screws. I'll just get out. I think even this, this gear used to break in them sometimes when the master cam jammed, it would actually lose some teeth. But that's our little mode switch. I think I used to actually unsolder these, but from memory I worked out you can actually pop There's a couple of clips on the end. I think I used to unsolder it from the board and take it out, but if, if you just lift it up you can pop the actual centre of it out. There's a couple of little plastic press fit things there. Uh, I've lost the technique of doing that by the look of it. But you can press that little face bit comes out. And then you, there's a lot of old grease in there needs to be cleaned out with a cotton bud. And then I just used to use a bit of brass, so just like a metal polish to polish up the contacts in there. Yeah, I'll have to work it. Maybe I need a bigger screwdriver. I'm pretty sure there's a way of getting these. Yeah, not the easiest thing to release, but there is a way of doing it without unsoldering it from memory. I'll have to try and remember how to do it. Usually they had a white face on it, so maybe this has been replaced at some stage, but you can see the metal there is all kind of corroded. This metal, or whatever they coated the metal with, just used to tarnish and and go bad and make bad contacts. That was a common thing, though. This one, the way it was running, didn't seem too bad. I think this little belt may be towards the end of its life. That generally seems fairly good, but it was struggling. Like This gear does not feel the loosest. Oh, as soon as we hit there, I think that's to do with this bit. Yeah, it is. It's actually that. If I push that manually, so we can run this through all its modes by hand, and it reaches the end, which is actually the pinch roller disengaged. I think that the full mode here was actually vision search, and it comes back a bit. Our pinch roller re-engages, this little arm comes back a bit. But we're still in play, we've got our guides out. And as soon as we back off there, we're getting back out of play mode. And yes, that damn lever is causing problems, I think. The whole thing could probably do with the lubrication. You can see this arm down here moving across, doing all the brakes and bits to do with the idler and stuff. I'm trying to remember why these used to break. I get a feeling it was something to do with it. No, it can't be that arm. There's something down on here. A uh, little plastic lever. I'd have to pull it off the mech to remember it's down under here somewhere, I think. And I th when this would come back, maybe it was this arm that... Oh, yeah, it might be... Yeah, I think it might be this arm. What does it do when we come back? Did it stay jammed out there or something? That seems to push it all right, so maybe it wasn't that arm, but one of these lit arms or something would not come back. The machine would jam and break. I'll have to have a look when I actually pull the thing the bits a bit more. But these, you know, I must have changed 100 cam gears in these things as well. You really just, you just, just got to take this pinch roller off. And that little clip there and that arm comes off and then the pinch roller just actually, uh, not the pinch roller, the, the master cam just pulls out. There should be a marking somewhere to line up, I forget. There is a hole in the middle of it there. I have to try and remember how that went, but I don't think I'll bother pulling that apart. This grease still seems okay, maybe a little thick on this one. I forget because they both go in above there's only one or two levers underneath it that you have to line up anyway and then the, the mode switch actually 
has like a D sort of shaped hole. It's circular, but then with a flat, so that can only go onto the master cam in one spot. So when you put this back in, you have to find the flat on the, the shaft, line that up, or it won't slot back on. So if I hadn't moved anything, it would have just gone straight back in, but because I've moved it, they'll probably be out of alignment when I try and refit them. So it looks like mainly this lever needs doing. I might have a look on the underside. At least they're quite an easy machine to work on. Uh, where's my battery drill gone? have trouble the, the idler wasn't going at first that belt is sort of wobbling around a bit so I'd say that's not the best I think these pulleys would occasionally crack from memory the capstan motors and these were reasonably reliable but the bearings did go in them occasionally but compared to the later mid drive machines these were a lot more reliable I think the once I got into the mid drives these capstans just failed left right and center but what we can do is if we remove that or well, something made a Ooh, no, that's got a, a noisy bearing in it. That probably can be lewd, but probably on its way out as well. I know most of these machines, I think, ended up getting scrapped because of the capstan motor. And if we pull this little plug here, it just pulls out. I can actually drop this whole mech out. Oh, there goes one of those stupid side things I had on them. That's the screws for the top cover, they just, once you take the bottom cover off, they often fall out the side of the machine, so just keep an eye on those. Make sure you don't lose them. Actually, I've got to take this, this little red clip here, plastic circlip thing off. This is the first thing you get out of the way. And put that somewhere safe where I can find it. And then we've got four screws, and we can drop the whole mech out. We've also got to make sure this brake band, you release that that'll hold it up and you don't want to damage that and that's why I've got this funny little I don't know what the idea of that was but there's a little metal piece here don't know what the hell that was supposed to do it pushes on that plastic thing but certainly an odd design once I take this little screw out that mech will start dropping and I think we're just going to move this brake off a bit I can actually drop that here's another one of those things that's fallen out that was another not so great design with these things. So the whole sensor light and everything comes out. And there we have our whole idler assembly. A lot more complicated than like in the 300 series sharp. There's the lever that fails in these. This has got the thicker one. It used to be just a round pin on the end. These have got the plastic all the way down. But it's always best to put plenty of grease on those. What does it? It does do the, the um, tension arm there. I'm pretty sure somehow when that... When the plastic here wears because you've got this plate that slides across and that sits on it and then we'll see as we go across that drop that drops into that part on the plate and it's just the friction of this plastic this is actually i get a feeling these used to be wide maybe they've actually i think because this is a later machine a vca 30 they actually i think in the factory modified this the ones we used to get as replacement parts are gray so I think this was a factory modded. I think they made this out of a stronger plastic because the other one used to get worn and rough. And that would wear this little lever. And then the lever wouldn't pull the, the back tension arm back or something like that. And the machine, when it came out of being laced up, would crunch. Everything would jam up and, like I say, quite likely break the master cam. Uh, that was a pretty standard repair in these. Lube everything up here, put a new one of these levers in, replace the master cam. And possibly, like I say, that motor that goes up to the loading, or the mode motor, they used to break a bit. Now this has got, see, all these little, there's like felt brakes and stuff, this little grey lever here. That still feels, oh, there's another brake here. Just make sure that spins. Sometimes these need a lube. 
but you've got to disengage your brakes first probably if I get this in the right mode they will disengage I'm not sure where they disengage it there maybe still got this one on so that doesn't really work I think these idler assemblies occasionally used to play up as well can't remember what went wrong with those but I seem to remember having to replace those at times with just a couple of screws and I think you can pull that out even with these if we move that might as well do it I guess I think it's just these two screws and that'll just drop out or pull out you might have to take no actually you might have to take the pulley off the other side can't remember soon find out I guess get a feeling they come out as one unit but it's been a long time since I've done one. Yeah, there it is. It's got a bit of hair and stuff in it. I need to get rid of that. So there's the idler assembly. They used to just buy these as a whole unit. Like I, say, I forget what really went wrong with them. I think someone said just got a bit too much friction or something. That possibly could do with the lube down in there. And I think you can take this off with a clip. Maybe it was a clutch in them all out, I, I really can't remember. I seem to remember taking these off and pulling them to bits. Maybe they needed a lubrication. We've got our, that's our sensor light there. And I guess we'll just check this other reel by taking the brakes off again. Runs nice and free. Don't think there was really much else went wrong with this part of the machine. And that just fits back in, slots under those sort of bits of brake sticking out there. I think they're more to do with the the end limit they are a break but also the limit of where the idler goes I think they can block the idler from actually hitting the reels I'm not sure why they use that but I think in some modes that's what they did but at least they're you know quite simple to work on once you've done a couple of them but um, also quite an unreliable mech so this one's done well to to keep going this long and probably a machine that didn't have much use Look, it's possibly had a bit of water in it in the dust. But that's quite a simple thing to pull out. I probably would recommend putting a bit of, use the polyglide plastic type grease. And even though this isn't the earlier model, I'll put a bit along there, right along that bit where that pin or that little lever thing slides. We should really flick it out and if I wipe that along that should get it pretty well coated that's just one bit I miss so I'll put a bit more in there certainly a piece of preventative maintenance that should be done on these things if you want to keep them going so we checked all that that should all be fine so it's just a matter of sitting this back in there getting the sensor light up through the little round hole in the chassis first then you've got to lift this reel has to clear the capstan motor and as you can see just be careful this brake band it tends to push that up and could potentially damage it then you really just got to hold it in place has that gone fully in doesn't look right on one of the screw holes there those two screw holes come right up that one seems a little bit off but where i put the screws let's uh, that's them if you get a couple of screws back in you can then do it work on up from below again or whatever that bloody brake band's lifted again they're only plastic so if that was a metal brake band you'd probably ruin it by doing that to it it would actually bend it and put a crease in it but these plastic ones are pretty forgiving thankfully oh that was the bit I should have shouldn't have put that screw in yet because that's the one with the little metal piece that was there should have really done the other two diagonal screws place all seems all right where's the other screw gone uh, one thing I didn't do which I should have done let's get this bit lined up back up here I'll probably lift that up enough to should have got that pin through that hole so I can put the clip back on that Put that little metal thing back in there that pushes against the plastic. Not sure why they did that. Uh, I think that bit of plastic just stops the reel. If you want the reel out, you just push that plastic bit back and it just slides off. Probably should have shown that while I had it apart, but pretty rare you have to take the reels off. But occasionally they do want a lubrication. 
and our little red clip. You can usually just push that on with your finger, like so. Just use your fingernail to make sure it's fully in the slot. And we should be back in business. Oh, bit of push that. Yeah, everything working again. Doesn't have to run them all through, like I say, by hand. Make sure you think everything's back. I'll put the capstan belt back on and put that little plug back in underneath here. I forget what they do if you don't have that plug in, but you won't have sensor light or anything, so the machine won't do much without that. That was something you could forget. Yeah, I don't think the tape guides and stuff in these had much problems. Uh, the capstan motor might be the next thing. I probably should unplug it first, actually. But if I'm careful, the capstan motor just has this ribbon cable here, so I probably shouldn't have put the capstan belt back on, but I wasn't thinking about the bearing being noisy in there, so I'll take that back off. But these motors were quite expensive, I think up around the $90 mark or something to replace. So once these machines got reasonably old, no one would bother spending the money on them. Um, I did find, I think it was a Samsung video or something that used to die for other reasons, that you could actually pinch the bearings out of their motors. You basically never use the motors because the machines are always not worth repairing for some other reason. can't remember, something used to go wrong with those Samsungs. But you could actually, uns they had a very similar motor, the bearing wasn't quite the same. But you could actually, I think the flat was in a slightly different spot. But you could actually pull the the, mo the bearing out of those because the electronics board was different very similar to this but different chip or something di different connections so you can actually undo these three screws and that bearing will come pull that out put the Samsung bearing in or if you've got another sharp motor with a blown chip or something you can actually just pull the bearing out and repair it that was about the only way sometimes people would be happy to get a second hand bearing just to keep their video going at a, just for the labour cost pretty much only because um, yeah, yeah. once I heard the price of a new motor, it was you know getting into a hundred and twenty, thirty, forty dollar job or something all up. They really weren't interested in spending that. But if you could do it for forty, fifty dollars or something, they'd keep the thing going. And those Samsung bearings never seem to play up, even though they're out of a very similar, possibly out of the same factory. The motor, I don't know. I think it looked like it was probably the same. So I normally just clean all the old muck off these and shove that down in through the. You can actually get right through the bearing. That gets rid of whatever mucks in there. The screwdriver's landed in the bin. And I think with a bit of grease on that, like really these are, th are meant to be self lubricating, I think. And where do I put my other grease? But even that polyglide stuff would probably work. But with a bit of grease in these, and it's vanished, of course. Uh, that'll get them going all right most of the time sometimes it doesn't but no my grease has just vanished like usual I only used it the other day here it is for some reason I didn't put it back but I just put a bit of this grey grease a little bit on the shaft down below you can see where the clip goes in so I only want the grease below that and you can actually get a bit up inside the the bronze bushing bits themselves. That'll put grease all over the caps and shafts, so make sure you clean that afterwards. But sometimes this is enough just to get them going again. Put a little plastic bit back on, clean some of them. It's got some sort of dust or something on it. But yeah, I don't, I don't know how many of these machines are fixed, but there's a lot of them. They sold enormous numbers of these things. Yeah, I saw the age where it, just about anyone could afford a VCR then. And they bought them, so that's not making a noise anymore. You know, I can't remember with these. I think on most of the time this would, you could actually do that for a customer. And be pretty sure the machine won't come back on you. I think just as they got older, a lot of these just sort of went a bit dry, and just that was enough to get them going again. But I think with the sharp mid-drive ones, if the bearing was at all noisy or anything, 
you had to replace the motor in them because they'd just go for a short while and play up again if you tried to lube them but the bearings here used to wear pretty bad on those I think so that's done just gonna get that back in place go through the hole there now I think from memory you got that little arm there always used to swing back on you get those yeah, there they are so you've got to make sure that goes on the right side because the cassette won't go in if that's on the back try and load a tape in it's going to hit that pin once it starts lowering in and it won't go anywhere don't think it causes any problem with the mech or anything but like jamming or anything it just gets in the way of the tape loading So I've cleaned off that shaft, make sure there's no oil on the capstan shaft. But it's just, you know, pretty much every one of these machines you've got, you'd go through this same sort of process, clean the mode switch, lubricate the capstan, make sure that bit under the mech was lubricated, that lever, so or check the condition of it, replace it if it's the old type, definitely lubricate it as preventative maintenance. And I'll just put the the belt back on these belt kits were quite common especially in rewind fast forward this capstan motor belt would slip what a, I think it was a VBK 102 was the belt kit for these I used to buy them by five or ten at a time from memory and you'd go through them in no time so they were very common once these machines got a bit older for need new belts occasionally I think these pinch rollers the bearings would fail in them but that one's absolutely flying. Nothing wrong with those bearings. So now the next part we need to do, I think you had to at least raise this. Or did I come up with a way of, well, maybe you could actually get away with it. I'm trying to remember now, it's been a long time since I've done one. Does that swing? No, no, that hits on there. I'm sure I'd tried to devise a way of doing these easier. There's a little plastic bit on the top here. Just, I think that just does it actually unscrew. Yeah, I think you've got to break it free from the Loctite and then unscrew it. Maybe it does just pop off. And it does just pop off. So there's that little plastic bit on there. Then a tiny little nut here we need to undo. And this this will have to be aligned back up. because it's a tape guide and if it's not sitting right the tape won't go across the head right and won't be sitting at the right height so then we've got this the nut fell down there but we've got this little intermediate roller thing which just kind of guides the tape on this side of the between the control head and the capsule motor and then we've got a spring keep all these parts somewhere so you don't lose them which I should really have a little tray or something and there's another washer which will be covered in horrible sticky grease. It doesn't want to come up. So that'll need cleaning. Get the cotton bud straight onto that. And wipe all the grease off that. Probably doesn't matter that much, but that sticky grease is, is the problem here. Obviously they had a bad type of grease or something because you know the earlier machines they never had problems with the grease in them but for some reason this tends to go very sticky oh yeah the arms are great big long arms so you know we do need to I think if you can lift it up a bit you could un take it out there's like a metal lever which comes off this bit here I'm trying to think but now I think we pretty much I might even mark the see if I can mark the height of that a bit it'll probably come off when the the other thing you can do is count the amount of thread. One, two, three. So it sits on the fourth one down. So if we go down so that the top of the nut sits on about the fourth thread down, we should be right in the vicinity. There should be another washer there, I think. Just the shaft, no, it might just be the shaft. Now, did I have to loosen? God, even the head's stiff on its shaft. That should lift upwards. 
being careful with that big spring with your fingers. Yeah, even that does not want to come off. I've let this soak for a while. Just with a bit of RP7 on there, so I'll see if we can... Oh yeah, now it's starting to move, I think. Oh yeah, it's come off finally. So I'll have to remove all that. Try not to sit on anything else. It's got a bit of RP7 stuff on there. I want to wipe all that off. Because that will dissolve grease and stuff. We don't want it getting on anywhere where we do actually want grease. But on this we don't want the old grease. But yeah, I don't know if I've ever had trouble getting the audio head off before. But as these things get older, there's going to be more and more problems with this sort of thing. Let's see if I can get a cotton bud. Yeah, I'll get that right through there. Perfect. So that'll get all the RP7 and old grease out of there. Put that to one side. Yeah, this spring's probably covered. Oh yeah, it's like glue. That's just gooey, thick, horrible grease. I might even... I don't know what I'd do with that container full of the grease on it's behind me. It's probably all evaporated now. Yeah, most of it has, but I think we'll soak that spring and put it in a bit of automotive degreaser and that'll solve that problem. Now, so we've got that bit out, so this shaft will have to be cleaned off. I might just use some, might even need some degreaser to dissolve that a bit. I'll try a bit of metho on there. That's the shaft for the actual audio control head. It's got all this old white dried up grease on it. This may just be worse than usual because the machine's been sitting around for years unused. Because normally this grease wasn't too bad. This is the same stuff used on the master cam, so it makes me wonder about how bad that is, but that's probably had a bit more use, whereas this this actual head basically wouldn't have been moved in a long time since the machine was made, probably. Whereas these little arms do get used, but they're a common problem if I wobble this back and forth while lifting. Yeah, it's just it comes out of that metal piece, just a little pin sits in there. Looks like it's got a little back washer on there, is it? Yeah, well it's disintegrated now. <laughs> yeah, I think the grease has destroyed that. Don't know what I'm going to replace that with. I might not even bother, just leave it sitting there. Um, again, I'm going to have to clean off everything on the actual shaft. It's mainly just the thicker part of the shaft at the base where that little um, half load arm thing sits. The upper part of the shaft will be alright, but anywhere there's any grease of this age wants to go because it'll, it'll just turn out like glue. That feels alright. Let's give that a quick clean off because there's quite a bit of yeah, this white stuff underneath. Yuck, it's really sticky. I'm trying to remove all that where it's around this little base bit. So it's actually some, oh, it was, that was that old washer. I'll get a cotton bud and go up through there. Just move it away because there's bits of old washer in there. But yeah, just shove the cotton bud up through the hole. That should be enough with a bit of methylated spirits to get rid of all that old grease. It's simply slipping through nice and now. That should run nice and freely. Although I've got it on the wrong side there, but that should have freed up our. Well, it, was, it was right at that point where it went to do it. Still a little tight on trying to get those tape guys to go. So I if there's something else still. You see, they're kind of coming back slow, it seems, so they might be gooped up as well. They have the same kind of grease on them. It feels awfully tight, sort of from about this position, it tightens up, which is another reason to do the cam by hand. You can feel where the tightness is, and as soon as it gets down, and they're kind of just slowly returning, so I suspect maybe the gears, it's not likely to be the master cam. They do have tight earth spots in them, but if anything feels really tight, hang on, what have I got my, where am I? That should be, ah, oh, that's back into stop mode. I was going to say, why is that pin in the wrong spot now? But that's just so I had to rotate the cam a bit further. So I'll just put a bit more metal grease on there. 
Yeah, I'm gonna put my screwdriver. I've got this black sort of metal type grease. Okay, have a reasonable amount around there because you want that pin to be all that little half load arm thing to move freely. And yeah, a bit of grease down here shouldn't matter, it'll all be covered up. And up inside there, get on there. Doesn't seem to want to go on for some reason. Probably because I'm pulling on that spring. And where's my little pliers? I want to get that spring back over its little terminal thing here. So that shouldn't move until, but it's springy in the range that it does have. And we can see if we wind it out like that, and then back again, it just goes straight. Before it was going really, when we got back here somewhere, it was going very slowly, but it springs nice and free now. So basically I've got to put everything back, which started with, I believe, the washer, and then the spring. And then I don't know if that goes a particular way, it doesn't look like it, it looks like it's symmetrical. I don't think any of this needs any lubrication. Now I've got to find the little nut which seems to have gone a walkabout. Now oh, there it is, it's moved right over there. That'll be right. So it goes to show, try and keep all your pieces in a container or even a bag or something. Now I've got to guesstimate about where that was, which is somewhere around there. I won't put the little plastic bit on yet. And then we've got to put our control head back into place. So oh, that's got some more of that white grease under there, so that wants to go as well. I completely missed that for some reason. I thought I actually put a cotton bud up through there. I must still must have not noticed it. That one's taken completely out of there. We don't want any of that old stuff. Gooey, horrible grease in there. Yeah, I don't know what, I mean for years they've been making VCRs without a problem and then all of a sudden they put out models with this rubbish grease and stuff in them. And to be fair, I mean they did last quite well at the sort of lifespan they were meant to do, but, but it's kind of odd that they've been making grease for years and years and years without a problem. And then all of a sudden they, they make rubbish grease. Oh, that's just like bit of plastic or paint or something and it will not come out which probably means it won't go anywhere if I leave it there but at the same time I want to get rid of it if possible yeah I think the very last bit I'm not going to be able to get it out unless I almost grind it off so I don't think that's going to matter that last little bit now I've got the spring I better get my spring back now it's had a soak Get all that degreaser off it for starters. Hopefully the grease is going with it. Still a bit on there by a little bit, it's less than there was before. The, some of this grease has gone super hard. Oh yeah, that's, that's got the worst of it. It does wipe off, thank God. But yeah, that's yeah, really horrible stuff. Okay, yeah, I think this went with the flat bit and then the bent bit at the top. Flat bit down, which goes under the little slot in the chassis. Now, the big question is, is how we're going to get this spring back around where I want it. Might have to slot that under the master cam for now. I think the spring just sits it back against the, the bit of metal the head's on. Now what do we are? Oh, we've got this other post over here, so I've got to try and squeeze down between that post that adjusts the sort of azimuth or, or at least the position of the head and this other post that we just put back on. And I think I said it was down to the fourth thread. So if we can get that height pretty well spot on, makes it a lot easier. It'll probably need a bit of alignment, but would be pretty close to where it was originally. Now the big problem is can I get this spring back in place without having to move the master cam or something because it's going to be pretty tight spring. I forget how I used to get these in. 
Or did I have to move? That's in the right spot, I think. Yeah, it's been so long since I've done it on this part, I don't remember so much because this was only in later machines that we started having this problem. I did a lot of master cams and stuff, but so I may even have to take the master cam out to flick that across. I should be cleaning the grease off this pinch roller anyway because it's got more of that horrible white grease on it. So the pinch roller should just, even that's not the best, should just lift off like that once you take the circlip off. I think we're going to have to. Ideally, you'd probably even do the master cam redo it. I'll see what this grease feels like. This stuff still seems to be pretty good. But it wouldn't hurt to get rid of it. It's not bad. It may be getting a little... Yeah, that bit on that bottom lever seems to be a bit stickier than it should. Oh, yeah, that bit there is completely dried up. So we've got a little bit under this. So this machine ideally would actually... Oh, I don't want to come off either. Probably wants a complete re-grease of everything. Which I'm not sure I fancy going to quite that extent on it, but... Yeah, this bit of grease here is just, yeah, that's just dried up and horrible. So I'll remove that. And the best thing is just put a bit of replacement grease in as you go while you can remember what you've removed. A little bit there. A little bit on this bit certainly won't hurt and I've got to take this little tiny circlip off here right, it's like the biggest screwdriver, no that's got it again wiping off the grease as we go put that over with the other one then this top bit comes off can't remember if you had to take the spring off or not but there's a spring on the end of it here I think I used to carefully grab that and release it like so, without stretching it, then this upper arm should even, that seems to be quite seized. So this machine's a lot worse as far as grease goes than what I've ever come across before. But yeah, it has been 15 years or more since I've looked at one of these. That does not want to come up at all. Never had these parts seized before. Might even have to try and grab it with some pliers and just Rock it side to side a little bit. Ah, pliers don't want to grip it. Probably should come forward a bit and try and. You've got to be super careful you don't bend anything. Yeah, that's kind of. Might even need a little bit of RP7 in there. Yeah, normally this will just lift off pretty easy. I'll just get the magnetic screwed over, get that spring out of there before I lose that. But yeah, that's not very happy. Here it comes. So that probably just lubed it enough or ate away the grease enough. Yeah, it doesn't look like I've bent it or anything, so that's the main thing. So this machine has major grease problems. This is probably a good thing I'm actually pulling this to bits. So now we're free to actually remove the cam gear just slides up, so there's only this one pin underneath it, I think that's it. Yeah, that is starting to get sticky, so unfortunately I think I'm going to have to clean the whole cam gear off. Which is something I've never had to do before. I mean, in the old days you'd probably just buy a new one and it'd be cheaper to replace it, but than trying to get all the old grease off one. That pin's pretty bad as well underneath it. Oh, so that's a second pin, so I'll lie, there's two pins underneath it. This is, as long as nothing springs when you pull the master cam up or off, it'll probably go back with everything in the right slots. I don't think, that, sure, those holes there are meant to line up with the holes in the cam gear, but they don't actually seem to want to. I'm going to remove all this grease and then put some new stuff on. What I think of that, just on these pins. And we'll probably have to clean out all the slots in the master cam. What went on this shaft? Uh, that was the pinch roll shaft here, yeah, so I'll clean that off. That needs a bit of grease on it again. There's a little bit of white muck there. I might just scrape that off and get rid of it. Even though it's under where it needs, where the pinch roll sits anyway, I think. But usually best to remove any old stuff. 
So now we've got this spring, the other end of that spring, which I need to swing around. Might even need to do that with some pliers and get it around this little, there's a little bit sticking up from the base of the chassis there. Yeah, so that's underneath, so this, this is now sprung back in place. The guide looks pretty close, I think it might need to go down a little bit. That should basically match the face of the head. But we'll tweak that a little bit more. We'll have to actually play a tape to see what that does. Uh, the heads. Yeah, I think these were common, these machines, for some reason, these later ones, for picking up tape oxide on the control head. Which is another reason I think the lower head is the one for the... for the control pulses and the upper for the audio. Because you used to get, you could see, like, we're on the little, just looks like a cassette player, audio cassette player head. And you get a streak of black stuff. Because they're all chrome dioxide tapes in V8, videotapes are. The chromium ones. And that would actually cause the tracking not to work from memory. I know that used to be a bit of a problem. You'd get them, they wouldn't track and stuff. And it was actually just a streak of tape oxide on the control head but the old machines I don't think it ever happened on but for some reason these newer ones seem to have a lot of issues with it now we haven't adjusted like there's an azimuth adjustment and stuff to tilt the head when I've got it in like this all I should have to do is play a tape firstly check that it's not crunching on that or anything looks like it's going across the head about right and then we'll just adjust the height of the head to to get the audio the best should it get it you know, the high, high, high sort of high notes of the audio and the, the audio sounding clean and as loud as it can get and that should have it aligned again I probably should have actually pulled this lever out now that I know the grease is bad pull this lever out before I put the control head back in and re-lubed the end of this but I was hoping I didn't have to pull all that out what I can do is wipe out the worst of the grease under there I have to scrape a bit of it with a screwdriver. Uh, yeah, it's just actually like gone into lumpy bits. And this is enough room here. Just I'll scrape out a little bit of the muck underneath, and we can re-lubricate that. I mean, I guess that's metal on metal. I might put some metal grease under there. As long as we get a bit underneath there, and a bit in that top hole. quite that much that should do the job of lubricating this all right yeah get that under that metal and between the two bits it should be fine and yeah this piece I took off is gonna have to oh well, I've got some grease already on that pin so that should do the job on that to get up the inside of that bit certainly comes off easily now but we can't put it back on until the master cam's back on now the other thing I was saying is these feel so that's this pin here does the tape guide something on those definitely seems just make sure nothing's going to fall off when you turn the mech upside down Oops. so that comes on this lever here which turns this and turns the... they do seem rather hard now there could be some of these levers on top aren't working now so these may jam well, no that's not jamming on anything is it? why won't that go? it's just very tight at that particular... although now it's jammed maybe it is that lever, I've got to push the half load arm out of the way, oh that's all it is so the half load arm this little half load arm that I just lubricated has to come up before the tape guides all run very well. I don't feel too bad now that the master cam's not in place. But definitely this could do with a bit of we'll start by lubing as a normal part of video service is to do these tape guide paths. Because that used to dry up in these machines, I remember. I don't think that grease lasted very long either, but at least it didn't sort of jam everything up. But put a bit of fresh grease where that runs and move that out of the way. 
Yeah, that's actually freed it up a bit already. So like I said, normally when you service a video, you'd run some grease along those bits. That grease is still okay on those, I think. Of course, now it's going to jam on that thing, but one thing I do suspect is, yeah, the grease there's not very good. Is this arm's going to be probably tighter than it should be. What do we got here? We've got a spring for the... There's a brake on the capstan motor. We'll just remove that spring. And I'll take this circlip off. Put that with a spring. And this whole piece should lift off in theory. Yeah, we've probably got to get this lined up a certain way. I don't see any alignment holes. Let's see. Oh, okay. So that little flat bit there, there is a little arrow, I think, unless I'm imagining it. No, there's definitely a little arrow type thing at the back of this gear and that lines with this little flat piece on the black gear and is that going to come off? it should, I don't think there's any springs or anything I just might, yeah this is definitely sticky and I think that end should just lift up but it doesn't seem to be wanting to or is that oh, actually I might be wrong, is that on a I think that's actually attached ok so that is actually attached I was thinking it was all just part of the arm, but that is attached to the chassis, so I don't want to force that. And that's got some pretty sticky grease underneath it as well. So I think if we lube, remove the old grease and lubricate this black gear, same on this arm, we should be able to get that a bit freer. Plus doing those tape guides. All the paths where the tape guides go, that should all free this up a bit better. And with new fresh grease on the master cam as well, it really has no excuses for not running nicely then. Yeah, that old grease is just horrible stuff. So I've got to get all that off that shaft there as well, and underneath it. So I'm guessing this machine's been sitting around for 20 or more years doing nothing. Might not be quite that long, but it certainly hasn't done much work this century. I forget when these they went to these machines. I think it was sometime in the early 90s it would have been. Maybe early to mid 90s. When they lasted like the 700 series. The sort of older silver or light black case machines. And then they, they did have a couple of VCA series. Earlier ones, like I said, I think it was VCA 101 or 103, before they went to this mechanism, which is sort of, I think everything started getting plastic around this era. It was from in the late 80s, the, the Koreans started making a lot of cheap VCRs, so the Japanese seemed to have dropped their quality. At the same time, the Koreans started putting out cheap machines in competition, so I think they had to drop the prices to compete. And they were adding some more different features and stuff with these half load arms and stuff. So it was all around that area that all these machines seemed to become lower quality and more plastic. Not sure if they should be a little bit freer than that. Oh, that's actually sticky under there. So even though I've done the top side of the tape guides. This part under here is actually all sticky glue. Uh, grease. So I'm probably have to try and wipe out the slots and everything there. Ideally, it'd probably remove everything completely from the chassis. If I was doing a full proper resto. So that my damn arm will get in the way. That's the problem when the master cam's out is that arm doesn't get out of the way. So if I push all that forward into the play position, I can get even further under here. I probably ideally should remove this idler assembly and stuff again. So I didn't realise the grease was so bad in this machine, or I would have left it in pieces. But that's the bulk of it off there. 
And while I got that out, I'll cook the burrow again. I'll give that whole tape, uh, tape guide path and grease. All the bits I can get to at the moment. Yeah, these machines are really are getting pretty old now. I still think of these as newer VCRs compared to all the really old silver and top loaders and stuff. And I'll just have to clean, make sure, because there's a felt brake that pushes against that capstan motor, any grease I might have got on there needs to be cleaned off. Now that doesn't seem to go right, oh, because that arm's in the way again, no doubt. Stopping it from going back, just to make life difficult. It should be out, it should come back here, that's all it was. So let's get the rest of the grease on then, I've got to clean that capstan off. It sounds like there's a young kookaburra around. Probably just left the nest, so they're going off. up here. The grease will move around a bit with use but just to give the whole lot of decent coating. And there's a bit of white old grease in there that wants to come out and go on the rag and another bit there. And yeah cotton bud. Clean this pulley even though the thing doesn't contact all it's still good practice to remove the grease. I need to also grease these pins that the things sit on. So that was our black plastic gear set on there. The arm on there. Again, ideally you'd probably do all these gears. The grease seems to be pretty soft on them still, but if you wanted to fully, fully service this machine, fully restore it, you'd pull everything apart, remove all the grease. Would be the only way to go, given the condition of this thing. Uh, so that's the pin that goes in the master cam, which I already lubed up. Is that right? So I've, I've got the tape guides and everything back in place. Got the bit underneath the arms and stuff. So I might have missed that when the camera stopped, because for some reason you can't tell these cannons not to stop every 30 minutes. Um, so what I'm going to have to do, this is, is quite sticky, the grease on this. Oh, I'm going to soak this in some degreaser and just give it a good spray with that just to make sure this grease dissolves a bit before I wash it off and wipe it off and then I can lube this all again with the, the plastic grease and reassemble it and then it's just really a matter of put, putting a tape in it and getting this header lined up and the little guide next to it and hopefully we've got a perfectly working machine again I haven't cleaned the heads and tape path fully yet so that I want to clean and that should get it going again Okay, this master cam's been soaking and I've started in the degreaser, I've started cleaning it off. Um, basically most of the, the grease is pretty pretty loose on this now. I'm really going to have to use a screwdriver or something just with a bit of paper towel here to wipe it out of some of the, the cam slots or gear slots, whatever you call them. Just trying to get the worst of the grease out the important bits where the pins on various levers and stuff run and just get the worst of that out of there probably would be easier to actually buy a whole new gear and just chuck this one out I'm not sure if they're actually available anymore they probably are but I don't really fancy I just ordered some stuff which is annoying and I don't really fancy paying another $10 postage just to get one of these at the moment, so I think I'll just give this one a quick clean up. It'll do the job for now. But yeah, admittedly, it'd probably be a lot easier just to buy another one than try and clean this, but I guess it won't take that long to do. But I have to make sure I get rid of not just the grease but all the degreaser. Not much point putting new grease in. If you've got the degreaser, that'll probably turn it all to, to liquid. 
that's got that pretty good. There's a few bits of grease that aren't actually in the the tracks where anything runs, so that really doesn't matter. Oh, we'll get the last bits out of the end of these tracks. But as long as there's not too much in there, it should be pretty right. And yeah, it's probably more important to get rid of it just because it's got degreaser and stuff mixed in with it now. Because that grease isn't going to do much anymore. It's not going to be very sticky after it's been soaked into greaser. But yeah, any of it that's not in the actual tracks or anything runs doesn't really matter. Can't do any harm there. Doesn't look the best, but you, know, you could really scrub this down or something and completely clean it off. Maybe squirt it, squirt some more degreaser in there and try and wash it right out, but don't think I need to go quite to that extent. A bit too narrow these ones to get a cotton bud or something into. But something that would fit in there better than paper would probably be ideal. That goes right up in there. But this has got the worst of it. Probably don't have to be this particular about it, but I like to get rid of all the old stuff just in case. Unless I make sure it's dried up, no good greaser in there. Because you never know what this old grease is going to do. Better just to remove as much of it as you can. And get these little slots cleaned out. But that's looking pretty good. There's just a couple of bits in the ends now. That's certainly the worst of it gone. A little bit up in there. And a little bit down the side still. Yeah, it's pretty good. Most of it's just in the other. There's a little bit down in there. Most of it's just in the bits in between the slots. And yeah, aesthetics. Now, the only reason you'd bother getting that out. So I'm going to have to re-grease these slots where things run. I'll put a fair bit of grease on them right through the slots they had it so because it's plastic and it's got metal running in it you really want grease all over everything so the, the uh, metal doesn't start cutting into the plastic. You don't have to get it perfectly coated because once this starts the pin starts running through it it should smear so make sure there's you know a reasonable amount in there and then the the pin running up and down as the cam turns that'll smear it all over the thing but yeah you want a reasonable amount in there just just so it can get on it smeared right over every surface the bottom and the sides just to increase the longevity of this thing yeah, it's not like this machine is probably going to do much work. But yeah, if it was going to be used by someone a lot for watching rental videos and stuff, you'd definitely need to do this well. Yeah, if it was going to have another 5-10 years of average use, you'd want to make sure you get it right. That's, that's pretty good already. And then I'm just going to have the fun of working out how to fit this back in. Because I don't know, you know, I think everything's back where it was. Because if you've moved any of the levers and stuff, and they're not in the original positions when you took this out, you've got to make sure the pins go in the actual slots where they belong. And that's another reason, again, when you've had one of these out to run it through by hand. Make sure everything operates the way it should. Yeah, I've got all that, so that's good enough. I probably should put some on the outside here. I'll do that in a second. Let's just, before I get it all around the outside of the gear. Now, one of these holes must align with one of these other holes here somewhere, surely. And that goes in the end of that, and that goes out in that slot 
Yes, yeah, the one thing I can't remember is I think that has to push it right out. Oh, I've got the other one in the right spot is the next question. Yeah, it looks like I have because that's the one oh, I still haven't got that damn bit in for that one. Oh, that feels a bit better anyway. And yeah, I better move that back again. Yeah, those guides are running a lot freer. They're still a little bit iffy at the end there. Maybe that's just how they are. Don't really like the way they kind of... Don't seem to fully go back. But anyway, and yeah, that should... I was going to say, that should be around further because I know that flat bit roughly goes straight up when these are in stop mode. I'd have to look at the manual, but I don't have any video manuals left now. I threw them all away. Thinking I'll never need them again, and I certainly haven't in any needed them in any recent time. That one goes in the outer outer slot there. Get the circlip back on. And the spring. Just a little bit of a pain to get on. But not too bad. Just make sure it fits right down in where it where there's little bits to hold it. Okay, and we've got this pinch roller which I've already lubricated the shaft. This pin I'd say goes in the end of that slot. Because that's about the only slot left and should be a circlip for that. Let's make sure the circlips have gone home. So let's have a look again. Half load arm now works. Tape guides out. Pinch rollers come in. So the little arm. Yeah, that's in the right spot. And we've hit the end. And everything should. Move out of the way, beautiful. So that's basically that, I think. Uh, I can put my mode motor back in. Oh, I was going to clean the the mode switch. And yeah, this gear, it's got to be that white grease where that comes down. That runs on the rim of the master cam. So I should really, now that I don't have to put my fingers all over it, put a little bit of grease on some of these teeth around. Probably doesn't need too much, but a bit round the edges and a bit round this gear itself, just so the plastics. Whoops, got a little bit of lubrication there. Don't want that much, I don't think. Since that's going to be doing a lot of rubbing every time we do something with this machine, this. This gear runs because it's running off the, the mode motor. That belt seems pretty good. Ideally, I'll put a new belt kit in this. But I must admit, at the moment, I don't, don't think it's really necessary. I might order one later, and next time I order some parts and get one ready to go. Now, I'm still pretty sure we could push these out, but. I am starting to wonder about that with this one. This one seems a bit different than this black plastic version. This might be a later mode switch. I don't want to break the thing. But this seems a bit different to the earlier VCA 105s and stuff, which were the really common ones. Yeah, that doesn't really want to pop out. So maybe these are a better mode switch as well. But... I think when I've got this to bits, I'll have to fire up the soldering iron. I have to unsolder that row of pins, pull that off, and then I can press the back of it. But definitely worth doing in these. Um, you know, I can't do much else. I'll just give everything a clean before I put a tape into it. At least a quick clean. But I can't do much else until I yeah, get the tape in there and actually align the, the audio head. Which I think I already cleaned that, but I'll do it again just because I've had my greasy fingers everywhere. 
all the tape guides, everything, really want to quick clean just because I may have got grease on something. No, I don't want grease on my tape. There's a little bit of grease on the bottom of that race head. So once you get a bit of grease on the cotton bud, go to, uh, go to a fresh bit. And that's everything but the heads. There's a bit of muck on this drum I can see. Yeah, quite a bit of muck on this drum at once. Now just being careful if you've got hard to remove stuff, don't rub hard where the heads are obviously. Yeah, some of that doesn't even want to come off. Only the aluminium in between the heads. That is quite well attached, whatever that is. Just a bit of tape box on, I guess, but I forget how hard some of this stuff is to get off. It can be pretty well stuck on. Ideally, you want nothing but aluminium, none of this black stuff on it. But you've got to be careful, like I say, just make sure you don't rub the cotton bud on the head, especially at any sort of angle, because they're so easy to break off. And you really don't need the hassle of that. Especially with parts getting harder to get for these things. Chuck that one away and get a nice fresh one to do the heads themselves. And I'll be much more gentle with those. Yeah, there's a bit of muck coming off the head. So they're certainly not clean. pretty right. I'll just get some water for the soldering sponge. Okay, I got the machine out of the way, so I've got this mode switch. And just a matter of sucking all the solder off these pins. Usually come out fairly easy. plastic bits on the back, just sort of um, sprung bits of plastic I guess you'd call them, that push in, if we can get two of those to push over, just like that, it's that easy when you got it out of the machine, I don't know why you can't do it with a screwdriver while it's in the machine, and yeah that's looking pretty crap in there, all the metal's fairly tarnished, at least this one's not full of bad grease or anything, it's a little bit of grease in there, and usually these contacts you give them a quick clean as well and just get your fingernail under there and just lift them a little bit give them a little bit more tension so i need a cotton bud and i have to try and find some methylated spirits could be fun i can see it actually actually i mean brass so i just use this metal polish anything just ever so slightly abrasive just to take the tarnish off it God knows when I last use this stuff, but it should still work, I think. Just give it a good shake if you haven't used it for a while. You just put on a cotton bud and go in around the tracks. And then the inner one. So we've got nice silver metal. Give these bits a bit of a clean as well. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. And then remove all the brass eye and any other muck in there, grease and stuff. Get that all nice and clean. This one wasn't that bad, but if I'm going to pull this machine apart this much, I might as well do that. Let that evaporate. I think I used to just put some of these, the earlier ones used to have a bit of grease in there. 
but not so much all these later ones, so I think I usually just use a bit of switch cleaner lubricant in there and just give it a coat of that. Clip our face back on with our contacts. And that should leave a bit of a coating of lubricating whatever oils or something in there. It's just a matter of soldering all the terminals back on. Obviously making sure you're not bridging anything out here. Simple as that. All looks good. Get rid of that. Right, so I can go away. And it's really nothing more to it than that. Now that should be what goes where on this? I've forgotten how it goes that way around, I think, doesn't it? Yep. So I've got the flat bit completely on the wrong side. So I need to get this switch to rotate. Oh, yes, actually, ah, that's right, it's got a pair of arrows here. One in this little square bit that sticks out, and one on the face. And when we line those up, well, that should be pretty much our start position. You've got the little flat bit. Pointing to, I guess, what is that on a clock? Five and a half or something. That's six o'clock at the bottom. It's just before that, and we should find our cam gear. Once we flip it over, yeah, that's slightly over to that side. And this should slot on or thereabouts. Yep, perfect. So plug that back in again. Put our little wires back in the clip. That can be screwed back in. And that's basically a full service on one of these things. I'll just have to move that so I can see how it just slot it in. Yep, that's all in place. Um, I think all we have to do is put the cassette housing in. Everything else looks good. I probably could clean a little bit more of the dust out of this. It's not too bad. But um, there's a little bit of the odd hair and stuff in here. I think you just get a cotton bud and wipe out the worst of it. There's a hair there or something there. Get that out of the machine. Not that it'll probably worry anything, but... Most of this stuff stuck in the grease and stuff anyway. It doesn't really move around. But it's always nice to clean it out while you're in there. And always look for foreign objects, metal objects, anything that kids could have shoved in these machines or anything. Most of them all right, but not always. And we'll just give this, there's often a bit of dust in the entrance of these cassette housings place to clean them out what have we got we've got a record switch on this thing otherwise it's all just mechanical there's no motor on this it runs off the mode motor one little belt here which I don't think this one usually gave a lot of trouble I think maybe sometimes they did I think that one maybe more but when usually you find the capstan belt seems to be the first one to go on these things and this is one of these mechanisms that's got the end sensors on the housing. And I'm pretty sure when we put the tape in, I think it blocks, or does that? That's just your, I think that's just the tab to let's see this actually lifts the, the flap on the tape. Actually on this, there's nothing like the older machines I had it on the base. But where are our end sensors? Yeah, that bit actually, does that cover one of our end sensors? Seems to be these square holes here, or uh, maybe not. Uh, where do I put my test tape? I suspect these machines, or do these have switches on them? Maybe these have a switch. I think this might have a switch. Oh, yeah, this has got a little leaf switch down in under there. That'd be fair, it's not. Oh, yeah, it is actually. Oh, yeah. As soon as you press this in a bit, it's just got like these gears that sprung. 
so the main gear is not turning and it moves this little white piece that lets the switch close or open one or the other, it's actually closed before I think, it actually opens so that's what tells the machine that you've up through the wiring here that you've put a tape in so it's not using the end sensors like some of the later machines oh, this is probably a little early for that some of the later machines uh, the ends just there'll be something covering the end sensor or not covering it and when you push the tape in it'll cover it and the machine that uses that to detect the tape in and we've got this little lift up bit here which lifts your door flap up so you've got to make sure you push the door upwards in the upward position with your finger as you slot this in so that that gets underneath the door otherwise like I say when you go to eject the tape will come back up and just it'll go in fine but when it comes back up it'll hit the door and the door won't lift up and then it'll most likely just like reload back in again so put a connector back on, belt back on and there's a couple of red screws here somewhere usually best to screw these things in while you're loading tapes and stuff rather than messing around saving a couple of seconds and then you find things will lift up and do god knows what so it's much easier usually just to put them in place there's no chance of anything getting damaged no chance of the tape lifting up don't really have to put this other one in yet but I might shove that in there I'm feeling fairly confident but I could be wrong but hopefully we fix this machine pretty well, pretty thoroughly so let's turn it back on operate, nothing's running is a good sign until I put this in mode switch, mode, motor's going, cam's going still make a little bit of noise there somewhere so that can even be this gear in here being noisy well our reel still isn't coming across is a problem oh yeah something's very noisy, I think that can be this gear So the reel's actually working well. What I can do is remove that. Go into play because I can do it without the loading mechanism. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. If I hit stop, so there's no noise now. Flick that to make it think that, oh, and it turned it then. So let's try fast forward. Absolutely fine. We've done the mode switch, so it's not that. That can sometimes cause like the reels not to engage or something. That works perfectly fine, but only when we're going to play. We're not getting any engagement. So that could be a problem with the idler itself, because I think it's got two separate bits it uses. And something else, and that was the capstan motor again, maybe. So what are we using? Only the lower gear, I think. I don't know why these have two tooth parts. Because the actual, from memory, these idlers move up and down part of them, so that would be the part that may be playing up here. Seems to use the lower part of the gear. But yeah, when, when we're meant to go in a place not lifting up, I think it's our problem. Can I... Can't really manually easily get to that so that may be the original problem with this machine yeah when it goes in that mode it's fine but when I'm going to play I I can, oh we're, we're working now so I wonder now now it's disengaged again so it's close but not quite so maybe I should have lubed part of that that's annoying if our Caps the motor's noisy again. I think that's what's making that noise. So maybe I should have. Oh, well, best if I eject that. Oh, better put the put the belt back on there. Would help. Okay. Is that? Or is that? Oh, that's that making the noise now. Very noisy. So this machine's pretty much got everything that went wrong with these machines but 
mostly just because it's been sitting around so long. Now, I don't know if we can trick this machine into running. Oh, yeah, we should be able to put the cassette in the housing. Although it's a bit more difficult with these because they're not plugged in with their own load motor. Can't remember if there's a way to run these with no tape in them. With the cassette housing out. So you can actually do a bit of diagnosis, diagnostic work on it. Because uh, the incenses are gone, let me think. I think if we push that mechanism into the down mode with it plugged in, that may be at work. I think this, yeah, this is, that's our problem. I should have. That is as stiff as, I think this should drop up and down easily, but we've got more dodgy grease, I think. But it did sound a bit like that capstan motor was also... Eh, maybe it's not the capstan motor at all, something else. Whoops! Oh, that might be the problem. <laughs> when I pulled the belt off, that's actually come off. Ah, oh, here's got a crack in it. There's a crack in the plastic there, you can actually bend it. That was a problem with these, so that needs gluing on. A bit of arrow will fix that. So that could be something to do with it making an odd noise. I think we can get the idler out without... I could be wrong though, without pulling the whole bottom bit out. Let's soon find out. Okay, so I've got the idler to pieces. Damn camera stopped again. That bit is going to need lube and it's not too bad, but this... I'm going to try and slide this up and down here, especially if I push it from anywhere back a bit. Very stiff on there. And that should even, it doesn't even fall down on its own, that should just slide down, I think, under its own weight. So I'm going to have to clean this shaft off. Clean this little brass bushing thing, whatever it is on the end, and there's other grease down here. Get all that grease out of there. stuff that it is. Get rid of all that. And same on the actual idler part itself. A bit hard to get a cotton bud right up inside this thing I think. But is that a little washer there? No. This I'm probably going to have to try and You just got to dampen the shaft with a bit of methylated spirits. Put that back on there. Much freer already. We'll rub that up and down a few times. That metho should get a lot of the grease out of the inside of that shaft. It's already probably fine, but I like to just make sure I get rid of it. Then clean the shaft off again. Whoops. Trying not to clumsily drop it into the machine. And that should be fine now. Careful not to get that on the heads. So yeah, there's a little bit here that sits into this brass piece. As soon as I put that on there, it just drops under its own weight as I thought, thought it would. But I'm going to have to see this has a tiny little... Probably doesn't really need to be done, but... I guess while I'm here... See if I can get this tiny little split washer off this one. Just gonna be real, yeah, it's coming. Yeah, you don't want to lose this one, which is exactly what it's gonna to want to do is disappear somewhere, go flying off. I can kind of open it up, but getting it off is another matter. Ooh, geez, I'm worried about this going flying. Might get rid of the machine for a minute. A deeper bench than this one would be more useful, so I could just push the machine back. But also, it would end up off camera anyway, so there's not much point. As if I can grab that on the back of the washer, yeah, that's it. And just, yeah, just pull it. Sometimes you just got to pull the back of the washer away from the split. Now, this spring, just make a note of where it goes. One bit goes down through that hole, and the other bit's around this little white back of that white plastic bit there, actually if I undo it right around it loses all its tension anyway and stays where it should. Yeah, 
this doesn't seem to really have much grease in there, but we'll give that another rub up and down there with a bit of metho on it, and then I'll just wipe anything that's there. And where's my... I guess it doesn't matter whether you use plastic grease or metal grease, since it's 50-50 on this. Just be careful those little washers and ones sitting there that they don't... You don't put your hand on or something, they often stick to you, and then you wonder where the hell they went. So that goes on in such a way that, yeah, as you flip it around, the spring... No, actually, the, the spring should have tension, but the little mongrel's come out of its hole on the metal piece. So I'll swing that back around into that hole. Now I can put that on. And that should automatically yeah, gets behind this white bit here, sticking up, and puts tension on it. Beautiful. Get our little tiny clip back on. You can usually just push them on with your finger. Just make sure they have gone on and closed up properly. And then we'll put some grease on the... Especially that brass bit at the bottom once a bit. And then up the shaft a bit. Just where that plastic bit goes up and down. And I think these here, yeah, these little pins sticking out of the end of this, have to go into the slotted part of this. Which can be a little bit of jug juggling around to, or jiggling around to get it right. And that's in place, we'll put the first clip back on. The one that slides down the shaft just to hold that bit in place. And yeah, see that hasn't fully closed up, so I probably haven't got that quite in place. It isn't all in the slot. Still isn't all in the slot. Well, it hasn't closed up anyway. Ah, because I'm not in the slot at all for some reason. Oh, well, the slot's up there, that's why. I've gone too low. Huh. Oh, well. Yeah, so that sits up higher than the... I was thinking it went right down. That still seems a little bit... Oh, it's because I've got my finger on that, let me see. Yeah, if I push that up and down now, it just springs... No problem. It'll now sit at the top because it's got the spring, but... There's no delay in its movement. And that should spin side to side better. But that would be our problem for sure. Uh, now the other bit's just for the pulley. I mean, why you got these pulleys off? Never hurts to clean the... Usually you just do it when you put new belts in, but you get the cotton bud in there and with a bit of metho and just clean that slot out. Tends to be a bit of muck in there from the belts. So I've got to put this back in the machine the way I pulled it out. With that pulley going on last. But that should cure our not going into, or not having take up on play problem. Now we've got another little pin here that has to come back by the look of it. Yep. That should be right. Yeah, so there's a little pin here and that pushes on that white bit that, and that causes the, the gear to slide up and down. So it engages, there's a couple of different gears I think on these reels and it, and I think it uses, in some modes it uses this upper gear. I think that's what's meant to operate in play mode. There's a currently a little lever here blocking it. And then fast forward and rewind it lifts right up. And this larger gear at the bottom engages the lower gear on the reel. So there's all sorts of little tricks to these things. But before I couldn't see that, that upper gear, the smaller diameter one, engaging anything. So I'd say that was, because I think this was stuck in the up position. Now it's actually down where it should be where it can engage. And put our little pin back in. Otherwise the tape won't unlock, it'll just be jammed when the machine tries to lace up, it'll just hit a tight tape, so it'll probably the mode it'll notice the mode hasn't moved quick enough. And it'll shut off back into stop hopefully before it breaks anything, but it could potentially without that pin pressed in could do some damage to the machine in theory. Most of them are strong enough or quick enough to shut off that it won't. And I'll just say one thing I want to put a little bit of grease on is on this shaft because the pulley rotates on that. So I'll just put a little bit in there. 
put our pulley back on. Don't think this is not normally any grease on the teeth of this. Doesn't need them, so it's not something I need to worry about. And I'll just push our pulley back on there. It does open up to a little crack. I didn't even notice that. I don't think they came with a split to fit on. They might have, but usually these were moulded on nice and tight. And just with age the plastic brakes. Doesn't seem to make any noise that, but like I said, it could be that gear was that um pulley, plastic pulley was slipping a bit, might have caused it to make some noise. Oh, and one more thing, let's get the machine out of the way again. We got this thing. Now, I think we've got to unclip the board. Which you've got to be careful, these little plastic clips don't break off. Just push them to one side a bit and the board should uh does it though, wait up. There's something does that switch lift off? There's a sensor. Doesn't feel like it's coming up. I think they should. Just want to be super careful. Was that switch attached? No, I think they should lift off. But it's feeling like the actual switch isn't doesn't want to come. That's loose. Oh yeah, no, that's right. It does come off. Maybe that'll just click in a bit. So we've got a little, there's a tiny little end sensor, a little transistor symbol thing there, very tiny little diode, photo diode, and that's the switch that detects, I think it's pushed closed when the machines eject, and then it opens as soon as you push the tape in. But generally, with, the, with some of these machines I think did have end sensor problems, some of them, most of them went under warranty I think. And this should allow us just to slide this bit sideways, it's got this other little lever on it. And then we can pull this out, and yeah, that is terrible. That's again, I've I've had them noisy before, but never as bad as what this machine is, because just the age. So we'll slide that bit down as well. There's a lot of black muck on there. Let's get a bit more paper towel. Clean that off, but these did occasionally do this anyway even when they were relatively new still and yeah, the grease in there looks terrible, it's all blackened I think I'm going to have to do the trick of wetting that quite a bit and just sliding that on off here, it's pushed a bit of muck out of the end there, I can get rid of now and wipe that off I could probably pretty much dip that right in the metho itself and that's already freeing up wipe off whatever came out of the inside of that thing because I can't get a cotton bud down there so it's easier just to use the shaft inside it with some metho still a tiny bit of muck in there and soak that in the metho a bit, soak the shaft I like to get rid of every bit of old grease but once you mix the new stuff in it'll probably be alright anyway but like I say, best to remove it if possible. And that's a nice clean shaft again. Just try and get any metho that's still in there out before I put new grease on. Don't know if this bit needs doing, but I might clean that other side off a bit anyway, just since that other bit slides on that as well. I don't think that needs any lube on that side, but I will put a little bit of grease where that gear goes back on. Oh, oh what have we got a bit of black muck in the grease there? I don't know what that is. A little bit on there. Because this does a bit of work, so. And that's all there is. You just gotta, you've got to be aware of this little arm bit which slides this bit back and forward. And the belt, of course, which I think will flip back up. There is a little bit of grease in the end of the mech here bad grease in there, I think that might actually need because it does rotate against that, so that probably wants lubricating as well clean it out, all the old grease yeah, and then put, put a little bit of that new stuff in there certainly won't hurt and you've got to get this that pin has to go back in the little plastic locator actually I must lube that in too 
that's not looking dirty or anything but still put some grease on that because that potentially will make noise as well get that in there and then we've got to try and locate that bit so it's already sliding on as we push that in and the belt should flip round yep put our little sensor board back on just being careful to make sure the contacts on that switch you don't bend them or anything that it's back off what it what pushes on it get those two clips on you're definitely located beautiful And lift the door again. Right, let's slot it in. Put that in there. So there was something I missed there. Well, two things I missed really: the loading mech and the the idler assembly. But that's why we check these things. Back on. Seems a lot quieter. And let's put it in play. And we have take up reel, yay! Yeah, and that top gear is now engaged before it was stuck up. It was actually sitting between the two gears. Doesn't have to put your finger on there and just feel the torque like that. Yeah, it takes a lot of force to stop. There is a clutch usually in them. Make sure it re this pulls the tape back in. This machine likes to likes to get some pulses from the sensor on that one just and then it goes back and does that one as well for the hell of it check the rewind fast forward and when we eject just make sure your supply reels rewind turning backwards as it goes so I'd say that is probably a perfectly good working machine now put that old long play tape in again I don't care if it chews that one no funny sounds, but I will still have to fix that pulley on the capstan. And that's going, so I can plug in the TV and see if it actually comes up with a picture. Now, what's the AV on these? Don't need a BNC. Video out. Audio out. Yeah, we've got our long play going by the sound of it. Normally I wouldn't have a long play tape as a test tape. Oh, I'm not seeing a picture there at the moment, so... Seems like the tuner's doing something. Get on AV just to shut that up. Might even hook the test pattern generator up again. Uh, where's the video lead off it gone? On? There it is. There, we won't have any audio, but this will just do for a test. Yeah, we've got a test pattern up. Ooh, we've got a weird bit of interference on that. What in God's name is that? <laughs> yeah, I'll have to swing the camera up and have a look at that one. So, yeah, this just with the video plugged in from the pattern generator, got this weird thing creeping down the screen. Not sure if these machines had on screen display, I can't remember. This could be something, don't know, it could even be the pattern generators doing something funny. Huh, very weird. I won't take too much notice of that at the moment, but that could be a fold in the tuning section or video section or something. Let's try recording a bit of it. Set the can. Where's the counter? Hmm. Looks like you've got to have the remote to get the counter up. Yep. It is. 
is seems to have recorded that problem. Interesting. But generally it's working at least. Oh, of course, we've got our head out still. That's another thing I forgot about. So that's, I think that needs to go a bit lower. That's running there. But I think I should probably get a set top box or something going here. Hopefully, that locked that in. So there's no sign of any rubbish on that, so I think my pattern generator is doing something funny. Let's soon find out. So I'll try recording a bit more with the, you know, the volume's a little bit better. Yeah, I forgot how slow these machines are to change modes. That was one of the annoying features about them. You're filming good omens at the moment, hence the, the hair. And I mean, I imagine Game of Thrones fans and Terry Pratchett fans. So the picture isn't the perfect there, but that could just be the tape. I guess there is, yeah. I mean, uh, but the audio is pretty good, I reckon. I've got that head pretty close to aligned. I really need to make myself a test tape again with a. Decent one kilohertz signal or something on it. But, um, let's get rid of that crap. No. Shut up. So it certainly pays to have a better television. I'm going to have to hook this up to something better. I'm going to have to get rid of that little piece of crap, I think. It's alright for just a bit of test use. But I really need to get a, probably a bracket or make a shelf or something and put a, a decent um, CRT TV here that doesn't mute. Um, they are handy to have one that mutes the sound when there's just snow on there is quite a good thing to have. But other than that you don't want it muting, like muting the picture or anything. And you want decent speakers so you can actually hear what's going on. So you can do things like tweak the heads in these and get the, the sound as clear as possible. So I'll just put this back. Yes, yeah, so I've had to just basically tweak that nut on the control head up and down a little bit and tweak the, the little pin there which is sprung just to make sure usually the part of the control head actually sticks out under the tape. This was actually sitting right sort of level with the bottom of the tape. But I will get another adjustment with the TV that I can actually hear a sound. Like I said, I might make myself a test tape with a good tone on it set to a particular level is usually the best way and then you can sort of tweak it try and get it back to that level or as close as possible basically peak, peak the audio for the highest level out of it which is a lot easier to do if you just got a uh, sine wave you can see the wave a lot clearer than just all the mess of a someone talking or something sort of audio wave but that's another thing I'll do and I'll have to get some new aerodite because mine's all dried up in the summer sun I haven't used it for years, so I'll have to glue that pulley back onto the capstan. But you can hear now there's there's no sounds, weird sounds coming from this, other than just the normal... Like I said, I forgot how slow these machines are. But lots of mode motor usage. So because this tape's got the record tab out of it, normally means they automatically 
do have to track this tape a bit. It means they automatically go into, let's turn that rubbish off. So, because if they've got the record tab missing off, and if you push the tape in, it the little switch in there detects the tabs missing, so it'll go straight into play, because obviously you're not going to be recording on that tape. So that's another auto feature these have, like an auto play. Whereas if they've got the, the record tab still in the back here, they, the machine doesn't know whether you want to record or play. But if it's missing, it usually means it's a play-only tape, probably a, a rental or something. But then we've got all these slowness of changing modes because this thing runs the reels every time you do something go from play to record or to rewind or whatever you get all this messing around which the normal customer wouldn't have a problem with that because they're not really doing that when you're repairing these things it gets pretty annoying when you're going from record to play and stuff all the time and you're just constantly waiting for those modes to do things all the time so if you're doing like a short recording and you've got to stop and then it's got to do its real thing then you can go back into play then you want a vision search because like, the counter doesn't show on this machine I think you've got to use the remote control to get the counter to show but yeah it gets a bit annoying when you're constantly going through the modes they've got to do that annoying thing with the reels each time but yeah for the amount that a normal customer uses it not much of an inconvenience so basically this does have a couple of buttons on the front here channel set and up and down if you press the channel set you can get VHF, UHF and then back to stored and you use the tracking buttons to go up and down to set it and press channel set again and it locks it in I think these are program search buttons or something these DPSS I can't remember what they are I don't know what they're all clear but I don't know if I've ever pressed that in one of these I don't know if it clears the clock or counter or what but it doesn't seem to be I can get the clock up I can set that oh, it's actually got the date in it so this is one of these millennium bug videos probably that never had a problem got the other basic functions here but you really ideally want the remote for these which I haven't seen a remote in years I think they were the big kind of long one with the LCD display at the top um, yes yeah, so that's about it for now I'll just have to I'll put it back together for the moment until I get some glue. Oops, better undo the got a million cables put into the thing. Get rid of all that rubbish. And what I have to do before you put the back bottom cover back on these, you've always got these stupid things that drop out. Two on one side are alright. They actually hold the top cover on, they were a bugger for falling out. And you put the bottom back on and then You'd put put the if you did forgot to put those in, they're often sitting on the bench, and you go and put your bottom cover back on, screw that all on, and of course as soon as you go to put the, the big screws in for the top cover, you'd find that you, there was it just went into a hole, and there was nothing there, so that was always annoying. So you certainly got got used to making sure you put those somewhere where you could see them. If you're not careful, they drop out when you're carrying the machine or something. So always like do it over a bench and it's best to put the cover back on these at least the bottom cover so they can't fall out because otherwise if you want to around with the machine no bottom cover on it they can just drop out somewhere and then you've got to try and find them again you'd lose them occasionally so I used to have plenty of scrap ones of these machines which was good because I could just pinch one out on one of the scrapped ones but I don't have that anymore so we'll just put all the other screws in a bag I've got a spare red one but I think that was from the Sharp 9300 this could really do with, I'll have to get a brush and vacuum this all out it's a bit of dust on the the tuner bore there which won't worry anything much but on the power supply which again shouldn't worry anything probably should turn the power off before I go touching that sort of stuff but these, all the 240 volt stuff's under that plastic cover 
don't think I have had many problems with the power supplies in these, or certainly rarely. I think there's a couple of regulator, and it's quite warm, a couple of regulators under that heatsink. Capacitors generally, because this is quite open, they seem to survive all right. It's not a switch mode power supply, so they don't work too hard and or too hot. Um, yeah, I think the, occasionally these tuners would fail in these. The main board, I think, was generally super reliable. Possibly you can get you know, things like, like that. You look at these ICs with heat sinks on them, these flat pack things, they usually drive the motors. So if you've got some motor that won't run, it's usually a BA something, I think they are. I don't, better not bend that because see what the part number is. I might create dry solder joints. There's a little IF unit there. And of course these people used to break sockets on the, the RF input and modulator. So that's yeah, got that little still got the test signal on these. If it's got that little screw in there, little round screw, that means it's a UHF output. You can set your test signal on and you'll get a black screen with two bars once you've tuned in. But some of these the earlier ones had a they were VHF modulators, so you had a low and high switch. And um, you occasionally get either dry joints on these sockets or people would break them off. That little unit on the back basically has a has the RF modulator in it, so AV goes into it. Um, and RF comes out of it, which you can see this lead here, there's an RF output. Goes straight into the tuner, and it has like a little amplifier section in there. Well, in the UHF ones, it's on all the time, I think, but in the VHF ones, there's a little amplifier thing that turns on and off with the TV video button on the front of the machine. But um, like I say, the rest of these boards, as far as I can remember, the electronics in these were super reliable, both the power and the, the boards. But I do get a feeling I may have had one of those motor drive chips dead in one once. If you fix enough of them, you always find the old one with something wrong with it. But generally, they don't play up on these. All the display, the buttons, everything seems to last on these quite well. So I'll get some glue, we'll glue the caps the motor on and I'll just get a better audio test tape and a better TV to listen to it on and I might even do a video when I get around to doing that and we'll just adjust that head I think I've got it pretty spot on just by sight I can usually get them pretty close but you might just want to tweak the audio just to get preferably a, a sine wave to see that it's gone to the sort of peaked out to the highest um, signal and you can listen with your ears for like the clearest best trebles and stuff um, and usually with because we're only going up and down we're not doing azimuth it's usually more about the level and you just again make sure the trackings in is working because if the trackings not working that's probably because you haven't got the control head in the right spot and yeah just try a few different tapes in it after you've done it just make sure it you know even if you have to press the tracking control to get them in just make sure it does get all cassettes that you've got a few different pre-recorder ones recorded on other machines and stuff make sure it can get it within its tracking range and you should be pretty right then so we'll get back onto this on a later date okay so I'm just going to finish this job off by fixing the pulley here which has got a crack in it so it just comes off the motor it's got a crack through the plastic so just put a bit of arrow dyed on um, first I'll actually give that a clean She's a bit of methylated spirits, make sure there's no oil or anything on there. Pretty unlikely, but you never know. And clean out the inside of the plastic. I probably should try and get a bit, yeah, that's where the faces of the crack are. I can't easily clean them, but I can probably just manage to. So I might try and get a little bit in the plastic, but you don't want it to get into the pulley area too much where it can rub on the belt and possibly damage that if it's sharp or anything. But the belts in this machine seem pretty good, so I'm not going to bother actually replacing the belts. I'll just get some of this. I've got the ultra clear araldite, but the five minute stuff will do. I just want to use this for other stuff, so I want the clear one. I'll just mix up a little tiny amount of that. That's probably way too much, really. You don't need much at all. So I'll just mix that up. I just need a little smearing of that around that little gold part there or bronze part. I think I'll put a little bit down a bit lower just to help stick up into that area a bit. So probably is a good thing I mixed up as much as I did just to fill that bottom bit in. And I'll 
just push that on. It'll open up a little bit anyway. So that putting it on those faces was a bit of a waste of time, but I'll just fill that in a bit on the back of that. So I'll now just have to let that set. I think this stuff does sit reasonably hard in five minutes, but I'll leave it overnight before I put any force onto it. Okay, so now I'm going to finish off this uh, Sharp VCA 30. I've put some um, Araldite on the capstan pulley. It's opened up a little bit there, but that doesn't matter. Plenty of glue around there, and I'll put some underneath, so around the pulley and down underneath it a bit, so that shouldn't go anywhere now. So I can put the belt back in. I I was thinking of buying a belt kit for this, but I think in the end I just decided this one looks like it's been replaced at some stage. So I didn't bother. Normally if this capstan belt's still good and this one's doesn't really slip, pretty hard to make it slip, so I think that's alright. There's no sort of bulginess there or anything when I'm turning it or when I'm holding the pulley. It does slip a little bit, but that's to be expected. I can't remember if I actually cleaned that pulley, so I might just... To make sure, plus the fact I've been putting my hands on this other pulley while I'm gluing it and stuff, means I'll just get a bit of metho and we'll clean that out. And because this is only running the reel, we don't have to worry about if that's a bit lumpy or eccentric or anything. It's not going to cause any wow issues in the sound or anything because the shaft goes up the middle of the motor. So that was a little dirty in there. I might do the belt itself. A quick clean, it never hurts, especially when the machine's a bit unknown condition, plus I've had my hands all over a lot of this stuff, so, it's, you know, besides your, just your natural sort of finger grease and oil in your skin, there's a fair chance I've touched other stuff in here, quite a bit of black stuff came off that, not surprising. It's always best to clean everything, just to make sure there's no grease you've bumped on something there, or got on your hands, touching something else and then put on there but yeah that's that's well within spec I think so I don't think I'll worry too much about another belt kit for this machine the other whoops there goes one of those metal things again that holds the cover on as they like to do one of these little mongrel things so you gotta always watch for them or well, two of them have fallen out I probably should have put the bottom on but I wouldn't mind giving this a test first and just to see this thing to release the power cord, which it doesn't seem to want to do. There it goes. Usually best to give it a test before you put anything back together. In case something does slip or whatever. I haven't actually cleaned the dust out of this either, which it could probably do with. But all the mech's been greased up. It's probably been at least a month or so since I did that. Probably even longer, actually, that now that I think about it. So... It's been a while since it's been used, but there shouldn't be any problems. Put the power on. I'll put the dummy tape in anyway. Just make sure everything's running. Plenty of torque on the take-up. So not the strongest I've ever felt, but it is only in play mode. Give it a little bit more. That's got a fair bit of torque. Make sure it's pulling the tape back in when you unlace it, when the tape guides come back in. These ones you've got to, yeah, they do a bit of a run, then they run the two reels. Just an annoying sharp feature. Put it in proper fast forward. And yeah, tons of torque because that's direct drive there. Never put your fingers like down a hole or something if you're going to do that because it may sort of pull your finger into the metalwork and some of those can be sharp. But just gently put your finger onto the sprocket. And just make sure you can't really stop that in, in full rewind and fast forward. That'll be very, it's basically direct drive to the motor via the belt. So I think that's all good. Let's eject it again, making sure that this reel pulls in. Which it's doing, it's trying to wind the tape back in. So I guess I can hook this up to a TV and chuck an actual tape in there. If I can find what I did with my tapes. I think I better give this thing a quick blowout. Um, use a paintbrush and oh, that's, I don't think I'll actually use compressed air. It tends to blow stuff everywhere. I think I'll just use a paintbrush and just blow it out with my own breath, just to gently get it out, get rid of the worst of this dust. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, so now I've got a videotape here. 
try this thing out on this commercial one. And tracking's terrible. In fact, it's nice and terrible. There we go, just doing the manual tracking on the front. It's always best to check every mode, so I'm doing the vision search as well as play, even the pause, stop it. I'll do the actual fast forward and rewind. It does really pay to do it right through the tape sometimes, but Usually with these sharp ones, when they play up, they won't rewind right back to the beginning, they'll go slow. Sometimes that can be because the reels need a bit of lubrication. And uh, usually though, it's the, the belt actually slipping off the capstan. This one seems to be managing all right. It is only a shorter tape, so normally you get like a three hour tape or something and test the rewind on that. Because there's a bit more work to be done. Yeah, that's looking good. Now I might just try recording on it. Put a little tape here. Not sure what condition this one's in. It certainly doesn't look the best. I might fast forward that on a bit. If you've got an old tape, it doesn't hurt to fast forward them sometimes, just because there might be a bit of dust and stuff on them. Just get past that bit that was sitting under the flap there. There's a few odd noises, I'm not getting a picture of it, so it's probably just blank. And I've just got a test pattern generator up at the moment. I might actually put the audio on. Oh, it's not, not managing to rewind that tape, I don't think. down. Yeah, it's having trouble actually doing the little test rewind thing it does. So this tape is either a bit tight or there might be an issue with the machine. For a minute, I didn't think I had a test pattern recorded, but it took a little while to come up. Possibly a little bit of wow on that. But, so this tape is not the best. Turn that off. Yes, yeah, so that's not managing to. That's a little far, so let's try it and rewind. That's where I probably shouldn't have put the back, the bottom cover back on. The tension around this little half load arm can be enough to. That makes me think maybe that belt isn't up to scratch. So, this at least is a good tape to test it on. That's why I normally leave the, the cover off until everything is tested. Well, we might get a chance to see this thing actually playing up, but it, I can't remember if I actually lubricated the reels in this one. I think I 
I might have why I had it apart, I would have hoped so, given all the other grease was pretty stuffed in this machine. But sometimes they can do with a bit of a lube, or it could be that just under that amount of load, we'll actually find that the tape, that the belt, sorry, is slipping. The amount of tape tension is enough to make it play up. That is slipping on the on the real side here. Oh, turn it on. So yeah, here we can see it. The actual belt seems to be slipping. Could be other issues as well. It's fine and fast forward. Tension there. It is still possible this old tape is not the best. But that is a, a good test of the. Well, that's actually what, a too old, it's an old Polaroid 240 minute ET40 in a grotty old case, so it certainly hasn't been looked after that one. This one's an E180 of some sort. having a bit of trouble. It is going though. So maybe this machine is due for belts. But the amount I'm going to use it at the moment is probably not worth it at the moment. But it's fairly easy to get a belt kit for these still. It's doing alright on this one, it is actually getting it up to speed. Ooh, it's a little slow, given how poor these tapes are. But I think that build is definitely getting to the end of its end of its life. No problem at all fast forwarding it. Definitely slowing down as it gets to the beginning of the tape. Even with a bit of a run up. This is going to struggle to get to the leader tape, I think. There's not a lot of tape left in there, but it's getting slower and slower. Possible with good tapes, no one will ever notice, but if I was going to sell this machine or anything, I think I'd definitely put new belts in it. But I'm pretty sure I did lubricate all those reels, so it's not that. It's just that belt's getting to the end of its life. But for now, I'm not going to worry about that. If I could get a remote for this machine, it'd probably be a saleable uh, machine, but those sharp remotes were in short supply even back in the day when these were still fairly common. But I'll keep an eye out for one. Oh, wrong screw. Should be a longer one, not a bit of that. There it is. So, yeah, I think for the time being, I'll just put this on the shelf. At least it's all been gone over and everything else is working. But normally most of the time if a customer bought one in for a pair I would have changed the belt kit as part of the, the job just so you don't get recalls on them. Normally 
the same sort of thing when you test the rewind you'd find they don't perform too well and certainly when I did one of these machines up and sold it second hand I'd always put a new set of belts in and do a lot of the general servicing I've done on this one and you wouldn't normally see them back again even with a six month warranty oh, damn that bloody thing escaped two of those damn things escaped so they're still getting me after all these years little mongrels it's very easy to get distracted and forget about those I did hear one of them drop out but this is always what happens by the time you get around to doing the machine putting the bottom on you've completely forgot Luckily I didn't have to take all the screws out, just most of them. So it's a bit of fun with these things, very common for those to drop out. And like I say, the worst thing is when you actually take the machine off somewhere, leave the covers off and put it to one side and of course they fall out on the floor somewhere. And it might fall down between other things and of course you can't find the things. Definitely a thing to look out for on these. When you, you know, in the old days when I had old machines lying around that I could pull a couple of spare ones out of, it wasn't a problem. But these days you'll be lucky to find another one of these machines still going. Oops. All the main functions seem to work. The recording's working on it. Tune is working got the worst of the dust out of it so I think we'll put this one back together and I'll put a note on it that it may need a bell kit might even order one I've got to order a few more parts anyway a few things I forgot and a couple of things I've needed since so when I get back another spare part supplier I might even order one for it they're not that expensive but I think it's only three belts in it a bit more these days since I've really got to pay retail, not trade anymore. But you know, probably six to eight dollars or something. And I can get this machine fully going, although I was never a big fan of these machines, so I don't really want it going for myself. But the other thing is, yeah, if someone asks about a video machine and, and wants one, this would be a good candidate. Just got to keep an eye out for a remote control for it. And I might just get some footage of it on the TV. Okay, so I think we'll call this one fixed for now. Um, I will see about getting a new belt kit for it sometime. These use a VBK102 from memory. That's the type of belt kit. They may have different numbers for different ones. If you look up Sharp VCA series, uh, certainly not. That I think some of the earlier VCAs, VCA101 to 103, were a different mechanism. More like the Sharp 800 series or 700 series, whatever came before and the rest of them yeah all this this i think the mid drive sharp videos which had the mech in the middle and a slightly smaller footprint they all use the same belt kit from memory too it's the same mechanism just mounted in the middle so any belt kit that fits those should do the job so we'll call that good enough for now i'll stick this one on the shelf and maybe one day i'll get another belt kit if i can find a remote for it um, but it's not a machine i particularly want to keep but uh, I've certainly been interested in doing one again. I used to fix a lot of these machines. They came in regularly. So it's just yeah, a bit of a trip down memory lane for me. Uh, doing one of these again. Interesting to see one still out there surviving. But I think I'll just chuck it on the shelf for now. And see what I do with it in the future. At least I know all the grease has been done. 
Um, the electronics in these are very reliable, so normally don't have to touch any of that. It's just those bits in the mechanism that seize up, and the belts, plus those, yeah, the caps, the motors themselves used to fail quite a bit, especially in machines that had a lot of hours. And, yeah, part of the problem is I think that they do so much work under rewind, those caps, the motors, rewinding and fast-forwarding and stuff. And let's face it, even if most people don't use fast-forward much on their VCR, but rewind was common. Uh, if you're watching a lot of rental tapes, or even your own ones, you always had to rewind it back. So I think that puts a bit of stress on the motors in these, the, the bearings in them. But probably just a bad design as well. Um, but at least this one seems to be pretty good. So maybe putting a new belt kit in it might show up some problems with that. But I think it did make a bit of a noise here at one stage, but it seems to be behaving itself now. Um, often you'll find it, yeah, especially when you're doing rewind at like a big tape at 240 or something, that's when it'll start making some funny noises. But I think this one's not too bad. But um, yeah, probably the best thing will be to put a belt in it at some stage. And if I can get a remote and then just see if I can find someone who wants to buy a cheap VCR and get rid of the thing again. Otherwise it might just sit it around here as a display piece. But at least that's been a good lesson on how to repair um, this, this series of video, plus also the amount of grease and stuff you've got to change in these things. I mean, I've had most of this sort of deck apart in this one. So that's one good thing about these. You certainly uh, get to see every part of them pretty much because you normally got to strip them right down and go over everything. And this one's worse than like in the old days. Like, you know, it's been 15 years or something since I've looked at one of these. Back when they were still a, an everyday machine used by people, the grease didn't get that bad in them. Besides that, it was really just that half-loading arm thing that used to seize up. But uh, given they were starting to go, it's not surprising that this machine, which could have been sitting around for years and years and years, not surprising the rest of the grease went, at it, went in it. So I'll chuck that to one side. Uh, thanks for watching.